Welcome back, everyone, to Third Street Reactions. I'm Zach. <laughs> I'm Shane. And we are back with The Boys Presents Diabolical Season 1, Episode 4. <laughs> you know what happened last time? Yeah, it was the one where he, it was Huey and Butcher. Mm -hmm. They find that superhero. Well, no, they find that guy who sells them drugs. They found his dealer. Yeah, and they and get they him spiked to... his dose. Yeah. And they gave him a cocktail. During the inauguration of him being inducted to, like, I guess, a Hall of Fame of superheroes, and there's people there... And he's flying around going crazy, and Homelander hears it. He goes like this, and he notices his heart rate's up. Yeah. Which is always one of the coolest things in the show, and it never even does anything with it. It just shows that he knows. Yeah. It's not like, oh, this is key to later. It just shows that he knows. Yeah, he's just, he's aware. Yeah. And, and he doesn't always act on that information, which is cool. Um, anyway, so then his heart explodes. He flies through this, this ring of fire, but he hits the guy holding it, and it goes through yeah, his stomach. He punches through the fucking... That <sighs> terrible fucking guy that like, drinks baby's blood or whatever. It was absolutely terrible, and yeah. Punches through him, hits the fucking water, skips across it, runs into the fucking crowd, and yeah. blows apart over there, and it's... Yeah. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, die ball of cord, you know? and Die ball. And then they basically tell the deal, hey, we'll be in touch. Fucking die ball of cord. That's what he... Yeah. The, the, with the whale. Yeah. In the actual live action series. Yeah. Says that. Yeah. But in the, the Huey character, who's based off Simon Pegg, um, he was even like, you know, like... Pretty sure he was voiced by Simon Pegg in that episode. He, you're right, he was. I actually yeah. saw that after. I think someone said that. Um, anyways, it was a good one. And I know these are all standalone episodes, uh, but I do know there are some ties to the show. So, um, I don't know which, which episode that was yet, or if we've seen it, but we're gonna jump in. It's a cool way to do, uh... Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I've seen a renaissance of this type of art, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a Sunday paper. It looks really good. There's a cartoon on Netflix that's critically acclaimed that no one watches. And it has this exact oh, art. You asshole! Oh my god, that's her. This is my chance. This is my chance. Oh. 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 Ah. Jesus, dude. I hate my stupid freckles. Freckles are nuts. Yeah. In fact, they're kind of trending in a way where girl, girls are putting freckles in their face with makeup when they don't even have them. <laughs> Neat. Well, if it's inner, you sucks. Just rub that all over your face. It's safe, right? Now, Mr. Dude, we're not legally allowed to say you can trust us. But you can trust us. Close your eyes and You don't trust people that say you, you can trust us. Yeah. You just don't. Very best. Oh, oh, actually, it's... Oh, wow. Feels like little worms burrowing into my face. Oh, scared of beetles. It changes your body? Nice to please you. I mean, the oh, fuck? Go buy yourself a new girlfriend. It's over. Oh. Hi. Cherry Sinclair in 3G. Obviously. Oh, 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 my goodness. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I can't believe you live right next door. <laughs> This is not going to end well. No, it's going too well now. It's already almost over. So. I, know. I thought when the lease came off, yeah. his face is gone. It's gonna change when they're in bed. That'd be a hell of a thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> I wonder if they'll show anything. Oh, damn, got some thick ass oh, there. There you go. Oh, he blew his load in her. She's letting it drop out of the toilet now. Aw, <laughs> oh, dude. Yes. Huh? <gasps> what the fuck? You, 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 you look like a... 
Boyd, hey, we had shown her titties. So I'm so sorry. Shit. Boyd, it's okay. I love it. You love it? You have whiskers. I know. Aren't they great? Seriously, this is who I've always wanted to be. A pussycat. <laughs> God damn. She's a curvy woman, but... <laughs> the green. Yeah. <laughs> It literally makes you stronger, too. This would change the world. See, the longer it stays this good, the more I think it's going to crash. Mm -hmm. Are they going to drift apart and then they're going to turn back to their real selves? Nope. God damn it. Yeah, they drifted in the pool. It's like metaphorical yeah, to... drifting apart. Fucking junkies, man. This is uh, the talk. So, that was a hell of a thing. It was. It didn't crash a bird like I thought, but and then again, I guess nothing's worse than... It didn't go out the way I imagined it would. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's still, I mean, even though you find out all it was bullshit, yeah. <clears throat> that there was still a lot of human elements to what was going on. Yeah. Because, you know, they, did, they broke down like probably the average person would mm -hmm. under the circumstances. Yeah. You know, the fire's all there in the beginning of the relationship and all these new exciting things are happening and then when they get to the real grind of a relationship, they kind of yeah. drift apart. When that limerence effects, I mean, when that limerence effect of nature just wears off, that makes you procreate, that in love feeling, you know, you got to work on it. And if you don't have a, any kind of basis or real, like a real base, you know, and then they have all these temptations, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, you, well, you're looking for that high again. Bill Burr has this great bit about you know, his heroes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tiger Woods, uh, who, you know, have been tempted because they get tempted at a high level, higher than anyone ever. Mm -hmm. And at a time in history when the only person who got tempted before that were probably kings and dukes, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, <clears throat> or the guy who fucking, the rich guy in the fucking village had all the corn. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, it is crazy when you see that kind of thing happen. I think, you know, we, we see that in the show. And I kind of thought maybe... He was going to get the girl, and then he was that stuff was going to happen to him. But I, I really didn't expect for the girl to get in on the train, and then they both got shitty, and they both diverged, and they both yeah. allowed themselves to unravel, probably like the average person would, or even like the fucking Arnold or the Tiger Woods would. Yeah, but then they eventually comes back, just you know, got a little more human again. Yeah, the regrets and all the shits unfurled. Yeah, and then but then of course it's all bullshit, and that was kind of like a little happy ending before his head blew up. But so that is like I've been trying to understand is like he imagining the end or I think that was just all going on in his head because the lady said I, I put on too much oh so you think the whole thing was in his head yeah that's what I was wondering and so what it made it, it made it seem yeah he's like how much did you put on and then his head blows up and the woman's like I think I put on too much or whatever okay so um, I mean, like with or without that ending, the story is still, you know, 
I, I guess the bit at the end kind of gives you hope before he he's killed, or if you know, if it was all bullshit anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's the whole thing. The, the bit at the end, if it went through the story that it told, yeah. it ended with them getting back together at the end, it wouldn't have been very very much a boy's story. Yeah. A story from this universe. Yeah. That ending where his head blows up is like, okay, yeah, that's that's what this guy's about. That's what he's going for. That's what Yeah. That's what the show's about, those moments. And so but what would what would your inner self look like? How you'd imagine yourself. Um the body I had when I was twenty six, but I'd be six two. <laughs> I'd be taller. <laughs> uh because I, I you know, I, I think I looked handsome, and I my body looked really good. I was strong, um, but I'd be six two. All right. Yeah, I mean, I mean six three. Well, if you want, okay, Frieza had this great thing where he wanted to wish himself to be a little taller, yeah, just a little bit, so nobody would really. Know. I guess I'd be six three, but I mean six two. People are gonna know something's up, so I might as well just be six three. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, if you're gonna go for the fucking jump because you're yeah. five 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 ten now, five eleven. Five, yeah, five ten, five eleven. I tell so, people six feet, but it's probably about five eleven. So you're gonna make a jump, you know, three yeah. four inches. Yeah. Pretty fucking noticeable. See, what I thought about doing is like having all the people around me. Like every time I'd have you and other people who saw me all the time, they'd all be a little taller too. So that you would at least... Yeah, but then I go out want. and people haven't seen me in a long time. Well, geez, that's a shame. He looks good. They can't tell. can't put their finger on it. You know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, like it's not real. But I guess if it was, probably that. But would I want to apply that lotion shit? Hell no. Well, no. Expect, well, well, we also know in the real world yeah. the risks involved Yeah, and dealing with those... I get there was no risk... Even if there's no risk, if you had to apply that shit all the time, I... no, it wouldn't be worth it. No, it wouldn't be. And, like, he dramatically changed himself. I mean, the girl just grew some cat shit. Yeah. You know, she still had a big ass and everything else, and she always had that, and her freckles were gone. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, I thought she looked, in terms of, I think, how guys evaluate, like, like a woman's sexual uh, uh, reproductive fitness, mm -hmm. she had all those things. She just didn't like her freckles. Yeah. Fucking found uh, okay, so we talked about this before. We'll touch on it real quick. The courage to call a girl, or he was trying to get the courage to hand the girl her uh, her lost mail. Did you have do you have any moments that come to mind where you had to really come up with the courage to call a girl, or or to talk to a girl, or to whatever? Well, talking, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, uh, I, I was married for a long time. Yeah. So for me, it's like I'm I am rusty as shit. I guess talk, think back to your boyhood years. Well, even then, I wasn't the great, the biggest social animal. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was awkward for me, all the time. I mean, it's weird because you had quite a few girlfriends. I know, but I don't know. I just like fell into them. <laughs> Basically, how it happened. Like, I know one, you fell into a couple. <laughs> well, the one I met um, at a show when we had the band. Yeah. So that was just kind of mm -hmm. in the environment. Yeah. Um, one. Trying to remember all the ones that I had, but I, so most of them were like people I would like meet through friends. Yeah, or like or one of them in particular was a uh, a blind date, but it, you may as well say that. Yeah, it was just like a setup. Yeah, and I don't know. So you did that. I mean, there were definitely instances. Probably, I remember doing it in like seventh and eighth grade, uh, or sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I remember when I was in sixth grade. All the girls at St. Mary's, the eighth graders, they were so good looking. And I was just this fucking sixth grader. So I got the student directory and I would just call them. I called them all the time. And it got to the point where I know they were talking about it. But I remember they told my friend Caitlin, like, yeah, we like talking to Shane. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know how well I handled it back then. But I ended up being able to talk to them for like 20, 30, 40 minutes on the phone. They invented me and shit. So I remember kind of, but this is like sixth grade. So I remember, I mean, probably I, I was able to download all this, like the manner in which to talk to girls who are good looking kind of downloaded, into, downloaded that into my brain a little early. Um, and I definitely fucked that up a few times too. But um, getting the courage, yeah, like it, it was, I mean, I remember someone telling me that like you got to dial a girl's number and you have to trick yourself into dialing the last one. Like do it real fast, you know? So I remember doing that and stuff like that, so. You mean like the last number? Yeah, like. The last like, digit? Yeah, the last digit, yeah. Uh, my cousin Jamie, who is going to be editing this, I remember one of the very first times I got a girl's number at the mall. He was with me. I remember her name. Her name was Brandy. She went to Athens High School. And uh, 
he, I was with my brother, and they told me to go up and talk to her. And I went and talked to her, and I got her number. And I, he said, like, the look on my face was so the cheesiest, stupidest, biggest smile. <laughs> then after that, you know, I kind of took off. Um, but it, it took a lot of, it was a lot of anxiety. I remember that. Yeah, I remember taking you to the mall all the time. So you can get chicks numbers. Well, I remember you'd do it with me. Like you'd help me do it. Like we I'd both help walked you down. Do it, but I didn't get numbers. It's not my thing. No, but like but if they're like two or three girls, you'd be like, "I right, Shane, or someone here," and then we'd go around and like we. Well, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Sure. Yeah. But I, yeah. So and then we ended up talking to them, and you know, and of course we met those one two, took them back to the camper, and one moved in with us at the third sheet house. Oh yeah. Yeah. The other one wasn't so. No. Great. <laughs> she, you know, you always have, like, the contrast with the really good-looking ones. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. With their, with their, with their friends? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, and sometimes I take it, like, so, some of the really good-looking girls I've been with, when they haven't been, like, on top of, like, the social hierarchy, mm. which sometimes it makes them insecure. And when they're insecure and that good-looking... Sometimes they have like a little friend. We'll just call them that. We won't say anything else because it's mean. But um, anyways. Makes them feel good. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, uh, the hot girl gets them into parties and everything else. Gets uh, the other. Meal ticket. Yeah, right. Uh, anyways. Uh, and I've definitely been a meal ticket. And I've used other people for meal tickets too. So. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I don't got anything else. You? Guys, thank you so much for watching our reaction and our review and our discussion. If you like us, you want to support us. That's great because we just hit 10,000. Just like and subscribe, hit that notification, leave a comment down below, and let's keep this train going.